G'day YouTubers and welcome to the sixth episode in the East of Stradbroke series. I think I might wrap it up in this episode. We'll have to see. There's not that many points left to go through. If I don't get finished this episode, I'll do probably a short one after this just to tidy it up. I will be doing the next series on East of Morton, which covers a lot more marks than we have had East of Stradbroke, so it'll take a bit longer. But I do hope to have a bit of a break and do some fishing before I start that one. Before we start this one, just a little bit of housekeeping. I forgot to mention in the previous video that there is a green zone to the east of Stradbroke, but it's well in towards the island, so if you're fishing the cathedral marks, it's not going to be an issue. You're a long way away from it. And then there's this one to give you a rough idea of the travel time from somewhere around the group or boat rock out to the cathedrals. Again, this is in my boat, my fuel consumption doing around 20 knots, and all that depends on sea conditions. This is just an overview of the marks that I'm going to cover in this video. There's not a great deal of them, so I think I will wrap it up in this video. These first two marks are a place called the Wide Ground. That's in about 90 metres of water, give or take and it's a reef that runs more or less north-south. We went out and fished that about a week before I did this video, and I'll come back to some of that footage a little bit later and just explain how we fished it. If you want to see the video, there'll be a link in the description below where you can go and see the video itself. But for now, just the marks, and we'll come back to them later. These next couple of marks are public marks. They're called Dougie's Pearlies, I think, and Obviously, they're meant to be marks for catching pearlies. I have caught pearlies in this general area, but I can't say there's ever been any remarkable size to them. They're pearlies. Uh, I think there's better spots for hunting large pearlies, but there you go. Have a look and see what you can do. This next one's called Northeast Lookout, and I guess that's because it's northeast of Point Lookout. It's also purported to be somewhere to go to hunt pearlies. And again, have caught pearlies in this general area, but not of a remarkable size. I've got two marks here that are supposed to be wrecks. I haven't been to them myself, so I can't confirm that. They're so close together that I think both marks refer to the same wreck, if there is one there. And one day when I'm in the area, I'm going to go and see if I can confirm that on sonar. In the meantime, if you're going past, just have a look. If you can find a wreck, there's bound to be fish on it. Now this is another public mark. Again, I've caught fish in the general area, but it's called wire patch. I've heard of several areas. They say I go to wire patch and they're all different areas. It's not one that I know as wire patch. This is another mark I've got off the internet. It's uh, supposedly a spot for kingies. I have caught amberjack and kingies in the area, but where I caught them was closer in towards Point Lookout. So I don't know about this mark, putting it there, if you're going past it, you can have a look. But I would be going to the previous video if you're looking for a Kingish Nambachak and hunting that reef that I mentioned there. Here's another public mark, and this one's supposedly patrolling for Spanish mackerel. I haven't done any trolling for Spanish mackerel yet myself, not seriously. I've been experimenting a little bit, trying to figure out which lures to use and how to troll them, how far back, etc. I haven't been seriously trolling for them and I haven't caught any, so I don't know much about it. However, what I have been told about it was I would look closer towards Boat Rock and the Greek in this particular area and maybe closer to Point Lookout as well. Not to say they're not there, it's just that I haven't heard of anyone else hunting them in that area. The people that have spoken to me about it have been closer to the island. This next one's getting back into an area of reef that I have fished a bit. This particular mark came from the internet and it's called Tarum. Not sure about the pronunciation of that, but Tarum is a species of trevally. So I guess this guy's saying that there's trevally in the area and that is quite true. I don't know that I've ever caught that particular species, but I have pulled trevally out of that area. Also lots of other species. Just got to hunt around that reefy area and find them. This next spot on the right is a mark that someone has shared publicly. It's just on the edge of the reef, so probably a good spot. 
The two marks over to the left of that, though, are ones that I have fished probably sometime in the last two or three years. I don't really recall what I caught there. I think it was just some snapper. Legal, but not remarkable. But, you know, where the small fish is big fish, so on any given day, you might do better. The top mark here is one of the public internet marks. I don't see anything on the Navionics charts to indicate any sort of reef or bottom structure down there, but it may be worth a look because the mark underneath, which I have labelled nearby, is one that I had down on paper from probably many years ago because I don't remember fishing it, but the fact that I noted that down must have been a reason for it going back 20 years, I really don't remember but probably worth a look, and because the other mark's nearby, may be worth a look as well. And I'm pretty sure I've seen another mark, a uh, public mark, that's just a bit south of the one that I fished. So, again, general area may be worth a look if you're nearby. These next four marks are not fishing marks. The green triangles are just showing you where the reef is. So just to give you some idea of where the boundaries of the reef are, this group of three encompasses that sort of triangular area of the reef and the other odd mark is the bottom end of the rest of the reef which we're going to get to in a later video. I'll try and remember to include the bottom mark again in a later video just so you got the full extent of that reef. But any of these reefs should go over them uh, with your sonar at low speed and see if you can find some fish on them or try and locate the concentrations of structure and get those marks there. And because we went from the cathedrals up to the white ground the other week, when we we're out, I'll just show the travel distance from there and also the travel distance if you're going from the group to the white ground. Of course, all the fuel consumptions and times are in my boat if I'm doing 20 knots. That will depend a lot on the weather and general sea conditions. I fished the white ground just over a week ago. That's as of the published date of the video here. And we did pretty well, but we drifted it. And I just want to put this up to illustrate the point that these marks I'm giving you are just that starting point. You have to look around and find the fish. The yellow lines here are our drift lines. As you can see from the direction of our drift line, we're pretty much tracking along the general line of the reef down there. And we were drifting for roughly 1.5 kilometres, I think it's a little bit over a nautical mile. Our drifts were taking about half an hour, and there wasn't a lot of fish there, but they were there and they were scattered, and you know, we picked up five nice snapper in the few hours that we were fishing there, I think. I think, we, I think we did about five drifts, got a couple of snapper on one drift and one each on the, some of the other drifts, and nothing on a couple. So even though I've given you some marks, you've still got to put in the hard yards to find the fish. And when we were out there, we put in the hard yards. We did a run down the reef at low speed, checking out the bottom on the sounder, found where the fish were, went back, set up our drift lines. Now, we spent probably the best part of half an hour just reconnoitering and working out how we are going to fish it. There were a lot more fish down there than we caught. They weren't all that hungry. We had to burly up a little bit to get them in the mood to eat, but we did get the fish. The point is, it wasn't just a matter of going out there and hitting that mark and catching fish. We still had to put in quite a bit of work, like half an hour reconnoitering, and then probably another five minutes back to the beginning of our drift, and then we drifted a good half hour on each drift. And some drifts we didn't get anything. I'll just mention on this one, he's had a big bite taken out of him at some point in his life, probably when he was a lot younger, and it's remarkable just how big a piece can be taken out of a fish and he can still survive and get on with life and grow up. Always puts me in mind of the three-legged pig joke. Oh, right out there, holy s***. Mm -hmm. Oh. Get that back in there, mate. <laughs> that might be your personal best. Oh, bit of bad trauma there. Oh, 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 oh. oh wow. Get better and better. Hey, look how far off you've been there. 
It was a good day, and the young fella got a new personal vest with an 86 centimetre snapper. Uh, that was a really, really nice fish. Weighed about six and a half kilos, I think. Uh, zoom in if you want to read the dial on the scales. It was a good trip, but not a lot of variety. We got one Sergeant Baker, which we brought home to try because we'd never eaten it before, and I decided we should try it. It was quite good. I'd certainly keep them again. And the rest were snapper. Not a lot of variety, but a nice trip. And given the number of snapper we caught and the size of them, that more than paid for the petrol and the bait on that trip, had we gone to the shop and bought that snapper. And now to have a look at Sevens Reef. And just to put it in perspective where it is, this screenshot here shows flat rock at the bottom of the screen and the Sevens Reef at the top of the screen. And of course the brown area is the surveyed reef down the bottom. There's about 22 marks here, and I'll just point out that the marks with the blue cross are marks that I've got off the internet, and the marks with the red cross are marks that I fished quite a lot of years ago, probably in the order of 20 years, maybe a little less, but somewhere in that vicinity. No doubt the marks are still reasonable because the reef is still there. Uh, whether the fish are with it is another question. I think structure hasn't changed much they're likely to be i haven't been there for a long time i think i called in there and had a quick look around maybe three years ago and i didn't see a lot there at that stage but i was sort of late in the day and on the wrong tide so that's not all that surprising i threw a line in i think maybe i pulled up a couple of small squire that went back because they're undersized something like that but anyway marks are there, have a look around. If the fish are there, you'll find them somewhere close handy. Now I'm just going to let the rest of these marks play through. About five seconds of mark, so if you need to, pause the video and you can drop them down. I'll just go over the Navionics charts for the Sevens Reef and we'll start with the contour lines. As you can see, the lines are very close together around the edge of the reef, so that just indicates that it rises up quite steeply. And this one with the blue shading doesn't do much for me. Uh, blue shading is good on some places, but this one is just a total blur to my eyes. The contour lines are there. You can see where the contour should be, but I'm not seeing that in the 3D shading at all. However, this shading is really perfect for me. It's really showing the nuances of the reef down there and just makes it very clear what those contour lines mean in terms of bottom contours. I know it's still a 2D picture, but the 3D shading just makes it pop out that much better for me. I'll just superimpose all the marks I have over that reef so that you can get an idea of just how they relate to the structure underneath. I haven't differentiated these marks because this is in the Navionics chart and it's just a pain to go and put different types of marks in there. When you import your marks in there, it puts a default icon on the mark and they have to be changed individually, which is a painful process, so just bear with it. All the marks are just mixed together, whether they're from the internet or marks that I had. And this is the bathymetry map of Sevens Reef, with flat rock down on the bottom left of the screen, and Sevens Reef above it. The bathymetry map reflects the same sort of structure as the Navionics map does, quite probably taken from the same sonar readings. And the red circle that it is showing on this one is the boundary of the green zone around Flat Rock. So just to give you an idea how close it is, don't stray into the green zone. There's no real need to because the fishing's all around Sevens Reef. There's nothing much towards Flat Rock until you actually get into the green zone. And of course, being a green zone, you can't fish that anymore. 
And that brings us to the end of this video and to the end of this series. I probably won't start another series for a few weeks, I hope, because if we get some good weather, I plan to do some fishing trips and do some videos on them. I just need the good weather. I think I spend too much time doing these sort of videos and not enough time actually getting out on the water. Not through any sort of conscious decision on my part, it's just been a matter of work and weather. I guess that's the same for most of you. But I do want to get out a good deal more. Uh, this year's been terrible. The weather's just been some of the worst I can ever remember. But memory fades. So maybe we have had bad years before. I just don't remember such a long run of it. All of the spots that I've spoken about, except perhaps the wide ground and the cathedrals, are quite close to the bar. There's not a great deal of travel time involved once you get beyond the bar. And that tends to lead to a lot of competition because everyone races out over the bar and goes to one of these near spots. Whenever I've gone past them, there's just been a crowd of boats on them these days. Back in the day when I first started going offshore, there wasn't that many boats out there and you had no trouble finding a spot on any of these reefs. But they got so popular now, that's why I don't get to these close ones anymore. As I say, I looked at Sevens Reef and had a quick fish on it maybe three years ago. And I've been to Middle Reef maybe a year or two ago. But these marks are a little bit crowded for my taste these days. I don't like to be in amongst the whole crowd of boats when I'm fishing. I know there's some spots around the bay where you just have to do that if you want to fish them. And there's some spots offshore where you just have to do that if you want to fish them. But in general, I do try to find some spots that are a little bit more isolated and a little bit less well-travelled for a couple of reasons. I just don't like to have to watch out for boats that are drifting if I'm spot-locked. I don't like to have to watch out for boats that are spot-locked if I'm drifting. And I also think that if there's less competition, I'm likely to get more fish. And that's a big consideration. So don't let me put you off. Excellent places to try. You will catch fish, just perhaps not quite as easily as 20 years ago. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope it helps you catch some fish when you get offshore. Until next time, good fishing.